Need to numb the skin on the outer thigh? Whether it's for a skin graft, a burn dressing, or an incision for orthopedic surgery, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve block is your go-to move. It's quick, reliable, and one of the easiest blocks to master with ultrasound. Let's dive in. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, or LFCN if you're one of the cool kids, is a branch of the lumbar plexus. In the pelvis, it travels across the iliacus muscle and then sneaks over, under, or through the inguinal ligament before branching to supply sensation to the skin on the outer thigh. This is a purely sensory nerve, no motor fibers. Here's what the upper thigh looks like at the level of the inguinal crease. We see the femoral vessels medially with the femoral nerve beside and squish down on the iliacus muscle. If we move more laterally, we can see the more superficial sartorius muscle. On the other side of sartorius is a little fat pad that kind of fills the space between sartorius and tensor fascia lata. This is where the LFCN lives. Note that the fascia iliaca separates these two compartments. I used to think you could put a bunch of local by the femoral nerve and it might track laterally to get the LFCN, but I can see now why that was never going to work. There is some variability in where the nerve lives and branches, which explains why landmark-based techniques have high failure rates. We're going to image it with ultrasound to ensure success every time. Now, I've always been a little bit surprised about how much of the anterior thigh this actually covers. I used to think it was just a narrow strip on the outside of the thigh, but, well, here's my sensory block and you can see just how extensive the territory is. We'll use this frequently for incisions on the lateral thigh, like for hip surgery or when the surgeon is placing screws in the femur from the lateral aspect. We'll also use it when a plastic surgeon is harvesting skin for grafting from the anterior lateral thigh. It's really useful in non-surgical pain too, like for burns or when you're cleaning out road rash or suturing a laceration on that part of the body. Finally, this is a useful diagnostic and therapeutic tool for Myralgia Parasthetica. This pain syndrome is caused by compression of the LFCN near the inguinal ligament. I tend to get it on nights that I'm out clubbing in my tight disco pants, but it's also common in pregnancy and obesity. Blocking the LFCN can quickly diagnose the problem and serve as a treatment. With a patient supine, we'll place a linear probe in the groin crease. I'll start by imaging the femoral artery because it's just a nice consistent landmark. We can see the iliacus muscle and the femoral nerve, and on the lateral part of the screen, we can see the edge of the more superficial sartorius muscle. Keeping our eyes on that muscle, continue sliding laterally until you come to the end of it. Here we see that fat pad between sartorius and tensor fascia lata. The nerve will be hyperechoic with little dark fascicles. Now it looks like it's this structure here, but to confirm, I'll slide the probe distally to get it to jump out of the background. Now here it looks more obvious. It looks like a little raspberry floating in the fat. Sliding even further distally, you can see the nerve branching. That's cool, but I want to block it where it's nice and chunky, so I'll slide proximal again until I'm happy with the image. At this point, I'll insert a needle from the lateral aspect and land it in the fat pad. The LFCN is a superficial structure, so keep your needle trajectory fairly shallow. We're only about a centimeter deep here. And then we inject our local. Usually 5 mils of dilute ropivacaine or bupivacaine does the trick. Remember, it's a small sensory nerve. You don't need to overwhelm it. Tracking distally and then back proximally, we can see local surrounding the LFCN and its branches. In this example, we see a nice chunky LFCN and what looks like a small branch more laterally. In these cases, I'll block both just to be sure. And once again, we can slide proximally to better see the spread around both. Now, in some rare cases, you just won't see the LFCN, or it's a little hazy. No worries, just put 5 mils of local off the coast of Sartorius and you'll get it. And finally, this is a useful block technique to combine with a PENG block for hip fracture repair or other hip procedures. The PENG block has no skin coverage, it's only the joint itself, so this is a nice thing to do for those skin incisions. To see how to perform a PENG block, check out this video.